Today we're making a Frankenstein desktop. And I'm talking about something that is uh, blasphemy in the Linux world. But I wanted to take some of the ease of use of a regular desktop environment like KDE and implement something that you'd see like in a more of a hacker or more of a veteran Linux person where they use like a tiling window manager with a lot of that cool functionality. But a lot of normal people are just like, no, I'm not using a tiling window manager. I'm not spending hours configuring it. And uh, yeah, I'll just use that desktop environment with the floating windows. What if I told you we can have the best of both worlds with this Frankenstein system? And what I'll be using is BSPWM and removing KDE's built-in window manager, KWIN, and replacing it with a tiling setup. Uh, this is full implementation of BSPWM and full implementation of KDE for the most part, where we can flip-flop between the two and overlay them on each other. To set up BSPWM on KDE, I made a script, of course, and a little how-to guide directly on my website. You first need to make sure you have it installed. So we have a little dependency check. We'll launch our terminal. Just paste that in, and you can see I have already have it installed. Then we can go to the actual configuration. It'll create these three files. So just to read off what each one of these does is it makes these directories. It outputs these configs from the GitHub. I've changed some of the stock settings a little bit to be more in line with what you'd see in KDE, specifically making sure there's a gap at the bottom for the KDE bar. But if you have it on the left or the top, you're gonna need to go into the BSP WMRC and change some pixels. But most people will have it in the bottom position. So this will work out of the box. And basically you just take this whole thing, it makes the directories, it copies the configs directly from my GitHub, and then it also makes an option available from the desktop manager for you. So just copy this in, put it over here, paste it, it does it all. And to illustrate that, we will do this. You can see it grabbed both files, it made the directories, and it put it all into my user directory. That fast, just blink of an eye. If you wanna see more of the documentation behind this, I did, most of these are based off the examples from BSW, uh, BSPWM. And then we also have the desktop entry, this is just adding something to the X session so we can select it. It's installed, it's configured, that's all we need to do. So to actually enable tiling window management, we'll just come in here and say log out. Right here I have a custom display manager, but we'll just hit session. And now you see this new one, Plasma BSPWM. And this is a combination using that to where it'll grab almost everything from KDE except it'll switch out the window manager to be this. So let's go ahead and sign in. Now this is what you get. It looks almost identical to what Plasma is, but anytime we launch something, you'll notice it launches into like a tiling window manager, but it didn't grab our configs all the way. So to double check our config files, let's just look at them. We'll just go dot config and we're just gonna look at the directory here and we'll just do a vim. You can do nano if you're not familiar with vim. We'll do BSP WMRC. It should be initializing all these things, but for whatever reason, it had problems. So let's uh, let's take a closer look at this. Now, I found a fun little error with the script. Whenever I do that download, it doesn't download it as an executable file. I'll try and fix that, but if you do run into this and you notice you have gaps around the windows and you can't see your start bar, just launch your terminal and then come into here and make these executable because it's really important. So chmod plus x and then just a BSP WRC. So then if we do another listing, you can see it's executable now. And then we need to do that to our hotkeys as well. So we'll just come into sh, x, s, a, x, h, I mean, whatever, this, this directory. Oh man, that's a mouthful. <laughs> and if we look at it, it's also not executed. Uh, executable, so we'll just do another chmod and make that executable as well. We should have our files, but it did not, so we'll just log out real quick. Actually, I had to reboot the computer, but now you can see 
things are a little bit different. You see these workspaces down here. This is actually the little pager bar. And it's actually named with Roman numerals based on that config file that I had you download. Now we can right click and just say configure pager. What I like to do is always show application icons. You see how it shows the actual settings icon right here. So if I go to another workspace and I launch terminal, I'm like, okay, cool, there's terminal. You can see the little icon for my terminal, which is Kitty. Or if we do a couple file explorers like this, there's that. Or let's say we're working on a GitHub project. We got our VS Codium, and then we want to go ahead and put GitHub Desktop over here for the sync. We can have it all just perfectly there, and then we can flip between each one. We know what's in each workspace. The one downside to having this tiling window manager like this, you get all the benefits of tiling window management, but you still have a couple little buggy things. Uh, for instance, if you go configure virtual desktops, well, since virtual desktops is part of KWIN, not BSPWM, you're not going to be able to do that. It's not using the same compositor. It's using just a whole different thing. And a couple other little gotchas with the config file. You can see right here, I have some space. This actual uh, it has a gap right here. We can actually fix that by just coming over into here. I would say that's probably 20 pixels or so. So what? let's just go into our .config to modify it. Or let's say we want to just add some gaps around it as well. We'll just come into our home directory, config bspwm, and rc. Now it says, hey, what border width do you want? You could add a border width so you have a little bit of separation. We'll add two for that. And then we might do like a window gap. If you're doing a lot of things on the screen, like let's say you have a bunch of different things. If you have like an ultra wide, you're going to have multiple windows up on the same screen. So you're going to want a window gap. Uh, me, however, I'm still using a 1080p monitor. It's great for recording. And frankly, I kind of like different workspaces. I don't care about having a whole bunch of monitors because those are different computers. So that's why I have it set up like this. But if you are putting a bunch of different windows on the same screen, all visible, you're going to want a gap. Now for this down at the bottom, we see there's just too much padding. Let's see about bringing this down to like a 40 and we'll save that out. And then we'll just reload the config in real time. You can see there's a border now. Uh, there's still just a little bit of gap there. So I'd say that's probably about two pixels. So let's just modify that padding one more time, and then we reload. Now we have perfection. Look at that. And now anytime we launch anything, we could also use KRunner to launch stuff. So let's just launch like, oh, I'm, I'm not even using G yet. I'm using Kate on this one. It auto tiles everything, and you can shift these around however you like. Switch between desktops and go, okay, yeah, let me launch a couple more of these. <laughs> I mean, go crazy. Now back on your login screen, right under session, you just switch back to Plasma. If you're like, okay, this was fun to try the tiling window management, but I'm not really digging it. Just simply log back into Plasma. And then if you want to tr give it a go again, or you had some other issues that you think you worked out, just log back into the window management. You can do this one, which I'll just go ahead and launch a couple things. You can see this is just the traditional KDE. There's no tiling or any of that. But, you know, pick your poison. This is the, the beauty of Linux and uh, the Frankenstein nature of this. I just enjoyed it, and I thought you may too. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.